Emergent Strategy, Shaping Change, Changing Worlds. Resilience, How We Recover and Transform. Part 1, written by Adrienne Marie Brown, read by Sen Naomi Kirst Schultz. Resilience, the ability to become strong, healthy, or successful again after something bad happens. The ability of something to return to its original shape after it has been pulled, stretched, bent, etc. An ability to recover from or adjust easily to misfortune or change. Quote, resilience, verb, the way the water knows just how to flow, not force itself around a river rock. Then surely I can stretch myself in the shape my own path is asking of me." Unquote. Karina Fadel. Grounding in Nature Quote, Everything, given time and nurturing, is moving toward balance and healing. The mushrooms that cleaned the land after nuclear trauma, the process of forest growth after a fire, the way our skin heals after a cut, stronger than before, Healing is organic. Healing is our birthright. Unquote. Lisa Thomas Adeyemo. Quote, Nature regenerates. It works in unison in its creation and destruction. Nature is a collective entity. It lives on no matter what, in oceans, forests, volcanoes, and shifting tectonic plates, in the size of tigers and the hum of birds' wings. Nature heals itself, unquote. Sham i Ali Naim. Quote, From starfish I have learned that if we keep our core intact, we can regenerate. We can fall apart, lose limbs, and regrow them as long as we don't let anyone threaten that central disc's integrity. We can grow so many different arms, depending on what kind of sea star we are. We have to nourish ourselves with the resources we are surrounded by, with our community assets, if you will, and by doing so, we help keep ecosystems delicately balanced." Unquote. Jo Lillian T. Zwerdling Quote, Nature is in the pesticides that are in the flesh of whales in the deepest parts of the Arctic Ocean, because what humans create is not exceptional, it is not outside of nature. The vastness of the cosmos is a nuclear reactor that creates all the elements that make us up and makes up our minds and all that we create, from poetry to weapons, sweatshops, and digital networks made in them that connect people. Nature is everything, unquote. Micha Cardenas. Quote, We are part of this universe. We are in this universe, but perhaps... More important than both of those facts is that the universe is in us, unquote. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Quote, Nature reminds me that healing is natural. My body, spirit, and mind want to heal, and I need to create the space and time to do that, unquote. Andrea Quijada. Mushrooms detox the soil around them, not just removing the toxins, but transforming toxic content into nourishment. After many dives, I now think of, quote, coral reef as a verb or a process, a way that ocean life creates home and beauty out of ships, cars, bikes, and other things never meant to live on the ocean floor. The very cycle of food and nourishment in nature, the food chain, which works because most things on earth can be food at some point in their lives or deaths. All of the creatures I grew up disgusted by, roaches, mosquitoes, rats, vultures, squirrels, in a trash can, there is no difference between a rat and a squirrel, have slowly gained my respect because of the breadth of ways they nourish themselves, their adaptive survival brilliance. Quote, when I was young, I was taught to fear big forces of nature, tornadoes, thunderstorms, snowstorms, hurricanes taught that they cause destruction and devastation, taught to hide under desks in basements, stay close to home. For me, 
Somatic work has been about relearning and reconnecting to that wisdom and life in natural forces. That what is most alive leads to opening, creating change. That in the destruction of something lies a whole new world of possibility, a place where patterns can finally become unhinged and there's space for something new to take its place. Not that this doesn't come without loss, grief, devastation. It often does. But to see that there's also resilience, the beauty of survival, the move to create and thrive despite what surrounds us. To me, that's the essence of our fights for liberation. Unquote. Spenta Gandawala. Humans, especially humans who persist in trying to transform the conditions of life, are remarkably resilient. We experience so much loss, pain, hardship, attack, and we persist. Resilience is in our nature, and we recover from things that we would be justified in giving up over again and again. Resilience is unveiled when we are triggered, injured, heartbroken, attacked, challenged. I am curious about our general resilience as social justice actors in a traumatizing world, and as collectives of people shaping the next phase of human evolution. One core practice of resilience is transformative justice, transforming the conditions that make injustice possible. Resilience is perhaps our most beautiful, miraculous trait. I am not afraid of what I came here to do. I'm made of stardust. We are not afraid of what we are called now to do. We are all made of God. Human nature in football. I'm not generally a football or any other kind of sports watcher. Sports are so oriented around competitive and capitalist indulgence, uplifting heroes and gathering faceless, erasable masses to cheer them on. But I'm beginning to suspect that nothing operates outside the realm of emergent strategy. I was in Amsterdam during the World Cup. It was part of being immersed in this place, sitting at coffee shops with my lover and watching the competition with an international spread of locals. I didn't have a particular team I was rooting for and really only got engaged around the quarterfinals, but once I got hooked, I couldn't stop watching, and rather than rooting for particular teams or players, I was fascinated by the patterns and rhythms, the art of the game. It looked like movements, so I want to offer some analysis from my non-expert vantage point. I was watching the semi-final match when Germany scored seven points on Brazil, most of those points, within an 18-minute free-for-all in the first half. It was brutal to see. I had the humbling opportunity, during my dad's last assignment in Germany, to be a fairly useless part of my high school soccer team. We were invited to play a friendly international match against a team of German third graders. They scored like 30 goals on us while barely seeming to move or break a sweat. Over and over they took the ball away while we ran in circles, gasped for air, and tried not to cry. I didn't understand why Brazil looked like my high school team. In the semi-finals of the World Cup, I needed it explained to me. I was reaching out to people because the commentary was in Dutch and I needed to know where the gorgeous warrior dancing magicians I'd witnessed in the quarterfinal against Colombia had disappeared to. My sister Autumn reminded me that in that very breathtaking match, Neymar was injured and Silva was carded. She broke down how much Neymar and Silva were the center, captain, irreplaceable aspects of offense and defense, respectively. Watching the end of the World Cup, it occurred to me first as I found myself hoping for a mercy ruling in the Brazil-Germany match, and then again while watching Germany seem to easily work together to defend and score on Argentina in the final, that this was a perfect example of emergent strategy in action. Emergent strategy includes being intentional, which at a basic level I think all of the teams were. They each intended to win number one, period. But it also includes being intentional even in a fractal sense at the smallest level. Watching the way Germany had one to two people in pursuit of the ball even when the opposing goalie was trying to figure out where to kick it, 
There was a hungry focus on possession of the ball that presenced their intention to win in even the smallest moments. Emergent strategy includes being decentralized. Brazil's team was oriented around key stars who embody certain skill sets. When those players are in and on, it is the most beautiful playing I have ever seen. For Germany's team, even after watching them play several games, I couldn't point out anyone irreplaceable on their team, any superstars or best players. Based on my limited viewing, they seemed to easily interchange players and fluidly move together to defend their goal, not as dazzling, but consistent, effective, beautiful in its collectivity. Emergent strategy is adaptive and interdependent. When Neymar and Silva were taken out, Brazil didn't have the capacity or depth on their team to adapt. The lack of cohesion from their team felt loud. Germany moved like a flock of birds over and around the field. They worked as one body to take possession of the ball and move it. Anytime Brazil or Argentina got the ball, Germany suddenly had four players around them. It didn't feel like a formation, it felt like interdependent murmuration toward a shared intention. They flew towards the ball. The sheer number of team members attending to the ball at any given point meant that Germany was consistently creating more possibilities for itself to have the ball, to have choice over what happened next, and to get the chance to score. Quote, For me, it sometimes doesn't feel so easy to pause, center, and listen to nature's messages. Let's be frank, organizing can be chaotic and exhausting, but nature has taught me that while chaos exists, we can always have balance. I am learning to listen to those resiliency messages from nature in the same ways that I have learned deep, authentic listening as a part of how I organize. When the balance is off or chaos enters, elements of the ecosystem fail. Life is harmed. Relationships are damaged. Sacrifices are made. New ways of being emerge. Nature makes shifts to resist, rebuild, restore, and create. It strives towards balance, wholeness, by being in togetherness and harmony with each other. End quote. Beatriz Beckford. How we learn from pain. Quote, if we are going to heal, let it be glorious. Unquote. Beyonce. Quote, you don't need to use force to defend yourself. Safety can come in hiding in yourself like a turtle, or hiding by being yourself in the right place, like a praying mantis invisible on a green branch, or a toadfish on the sea floor, or by doing something unexpected, like an armadillo. They can jump three feet straight up in the air to startle predators, and then they run away. Unquote. Cat Aaron. Quote, Di Nvati Cherokee Translation Skunk Medicine The skunk asks us to defend ourselves effectively without causing further conflict. Self protection but do no harm. Gangsterish peacemaking. That is the kind of masculinity that I try to embody. With my leadership, with my poise, with my privileges, as my body continues on a journey of thickening, muscle hardening, limbs lengthening, Ayurvedic drying, shorter synapse pathways, fuzzier intuition, and choppier verbal articulation, all facilitated by weekly testosterone injections, these are poignant lessons to forward. The objective is for men and masculine people to not yield our power to others. Women and femme people don't need our paternalistic sickle to swath as we tap out. We must figure out power without domination. Just as our body mass of people of color in the United States continues to grow, and we inch near the time of outnumbering the current white majority in population numbers, it will be imperative that we use our people power strategically. Numbers alone won't ensure justice or liberation. The skunk asks us to use our powers effectively without 
wiping ourselves out. Without recapitulating top-down, give less to get more social structures, just as the skunk does not seek to be the bear, let us not attempt to trade places with the oppressor. Let us navigate a road of paradigm shifting that seeks to solve both current social and economic injuries, but also prepare a sustainable method of being for seven generations to come. Unquote. Holiday Simmons. Quote, and then there's the butterfly, a most magical creature. The wings of the butterfly are already held inside the caterpillar, and as it breaks down its old self into goo, the wings emerge ready to go. That process is amazing and teaches me that as we change and transform, we also have everything we need already right inside of us. So my organizing and healing work becomes about building the cocoon that can hold the goo so that the wings can emerge. Unquote. Micah Hobbs Frazier Nothing in nature is disposable. Part of the resilience of nature is that nothing in nature is wasted. The earth swallows it all through mouths or soil or water. This is such a simple, beautiful truth. Everything is food, fuel, compost, a home for some other creature. There are predator and prey dynamics in nature. There are battles over territory. There are systems and power dynamics. There is a focus on mating and the rearing of offspring. There are reasonable and unreasonable behaviors. There are toxic materials. There are volcanic explosions and avalanches and so much destruction. And yet, nothing is disposable. The cycle of life ultimately makes use of everything. Quote, I've found that our immediate environments are mirrors for the spiritual turmoil inside of us that we inherited from our forebears. By reclaiming our relationship with the earth, we can then start healing ourselves and our communities from the inside out and from the ground up. Unquote. Shane Bernardo. Humans have made of ourselves a hierarchy of value in which some people are disposable, can fail at being human, can be killed as a punishment, can be collateral damage, can be wasted or tortured or locked in a small box for their whole lives, given no hope of transformation or a future in society. And even those of us who critique these punitive methods, who are committed to justice, practice our own versions of prisons, blacklists, takedowns, and public executions. When we don't agree with each other, we destroy each other. When we feel competitive with each other, we splinter and destroy the other. We say we don't care and then invest time and energy into cultivating conflict with each other. When we feel scared, we destroy each other instead of working to get to the root of our fear. How do we shift into a culture in which conflict and difference is generative? One place to turn to with a transformative justice lens is our shared vision. When we imagine the world we want to shift towards, are we dreaming of being the winners of the future? Or are we dreaming of a world where winning is no longer necessary because there are no enemies? Domination or peace? I argue that peace is the most strategic option for our long-term survival. Not an uninformed or compromising peace, a peace that is built on truth, accountability, and equity. I will admit here that even some of my closest loved ones find me naive for holding a vision of a humanity with no enemies. I can imagine it, though, and in fact, it seems like the only viable long-term solution. We need to transform all of the energy we currently put into war and punishment into creating solutions for how to continue on this planet. The time, the energy, the money, we actually have all of that in abundance. What we lack is will. What we put our attention on grows. We have been growing otherness, borders, separateness, 
And in all that division, we have created layer upon layer of trauma and vengefulness, conditions for permanent war, practices that move us into a battle with the very planet we rely on for all life. The scale of division, conflict, racism, xenophobia, and hierarchical supremacy on our planet is overwhelming. Finding the places of healing and transformation, moving towards a world beyond enemies, is work that has to be done for our survival, which means transformative justice. Justice that transforms the root causes of injustice is necessary at every scale. But I am particularly focused on how it becomes the common orientation and practice of movements for social change, for peace, for liberation. I tie transformative justice into emergent strategy because it feels like a non-negotiable aspect of our future and because the natural world has guidance for us here. Transformative justice in the context of emergent strategy asks us to consider how to transform toxic energy, hurt, legitimate pain and conflict into solutions, to get under the wrong, to find a way to coexist, to be energy moving towards life together. While we often put our attention on the state and demand transformative and restorative justice, it is important that individuals begin practicing in our personal, familial, and communal lives. We can reach the people we need to reach and measure our work by the way the relationships feel. It is hard work, but it is accessible to anyone, anywhere, at any scale. Eventually, transformative practices that begin small will demand new societal structures. I suspect we can't back into this, demanding that our government provide a form of justice that even we in our movements do not know how to practice in real time. So let's grow our expertise in this. Before I go any further in this section, I want to share with y'all some wisdom from the incomparable Shira Hassan. Shira and I can never quite remember when and how we met, but it was when we were both doing harm reduction work, reducing the harm from drug use and sex, while increasing the agency of each human being to make decisions related to his, her, or their body without shame or judgment. And we were thrilled to find each other. Over the years, she has been a confidant, a tarot reader, guide, friend. She has taught me how to be less judgmental, to love my fatness, to embrace my own needs as my body has gone through various levels of ability and disability and through her work at Young Women's Empowerment Project, YWEP, and her consulting. She has taught me a ton about transformative justice. I showed Shira an early draft of this book, and her feedback was so good that I had to include it here as a core part of this chapter. Here is some Shira brilliance. I love that you are writing about transformative justice in the context of emergent strategy. I need us to acknowledge more that we have no idea what we are doing, that we are birthing a new collective consciousness out of the pain of losing too many people to colonialist justice. I need transformative justice, TJ, to be framed as a part of emergent strategy so that we can acknowledge we are midwives to a changeling, that TJ is mutable process with only its values set in stone. In order to resist one-size-fits-all justice, we have to resist the idea that every process looks the same. The goal is for us to embody these values so that our creativity can guide our healing and our drive for treating each other with true justice. With every experience of healing on our own terms, we also begin to heal the generational wounds of colonialist justice. Here is the definition I use in my trainings in that YWEP used to. Transformative justice. One, acknowledges the reality of state harm. Two, looks for alternative ways to address or interrupt harm, which do not rely on the state. Three, relies on organic, creative strategies that are community-created and sustained. And four, transforms the root causes of violence, not only the individual experience. I love the piece you wrote that is included later in this section. 
We are still beginning. It's one of my favorites on TJ right now, and I've been using it in my workshops. Quote, nothing in nature is disposable, unquote. This isn't most people's belief. I just killed a bug earlier today and will set out some rat poison tomorrow. Lol. But for real, also the struggle between disposability and getting something, someone that doesn't work for me out of my life. No one is disposable, and yet, we have a right to make boundaries. Furthermore, we want people to make boundaries. For people who are currently in abusive situations and living with their violent partners, this kind of TJ thinking needs more clarity. I can't tell you how many times I have had to go back to the drawing board because someone I love has used TJ principles of transformation and non-shaming to justify the return of their abusive jerk partner. I say all this to say I think it's important to think of the audience as people who are currently in abusive situations. What are we telling them? What are we asking? I really like Generation 5's work on this. I use this a lot. It's a combination of Gen 5's principles with YWEP's thinking combined into it. Safety, healing, and agency for all. 1. Safety, healing, and individual agency for survivors. 2. Accountability and a transformation for people who harm. 3. Community action, healing, and or group org accountability. 4. Transformation of the social conditions that perpetuate violence. Resilience Part 1. How we recover and transform. Part 1. Written by Adrienne Marie Brown. Read by Sen Naomi Kirst Schultz.